Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1420. Perfection is just a direction. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and the interior, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right, 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. My favorite collector car magazine is Keith Martin's Sports Car Market. I've been a subscriber for decades. Sports Car Market is the Wall Street Journal for the enthusiast and the collector. It's your monthly must-read whether you dream of owning a collector car, have two cars, or 200. Sports Car Market has been around for 31 years, and it's filled with valuable articles, intelligent write-ups, and the latest auction sales. Go to sportscarmarket.com and subscribe today. Plus, you'll get the exclusive SEM guide to restoration shops included for free. At checkout, use the code CARSYA and receive a 50% discount on your digital subscription. It's an exclusive offer from me here at Cars Yeah. I'm Mark Green, and I love Sports Car Market Magazine. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm a revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from Marina Del Rey. He's a little south of his home in Eugene, Oregon, Mark Fronmayer. Mark, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? I'll always got, uh, got both, both harnesses attached. All right, that's good. Hopefully we won't need those today. Mark Fronmayer is the founder of Arkamoto an electric vehicle company that he started in 2007. He's led the team through eight generations of prototype vehicles and a NASDAQ-listed Regulation A IPO to a public electric vehicle manufacturing company. Mark's goal was to bring affordable, ultra-efficient, useful new vehicles into the marketplace. This year, he began delivery of his first retail product to customers on the West Coast, and it's called the Fun Utility Vehicle. Mark is a UC Berkeley grad with a degree in electrical engineering and computer sciences. He has served on the Oregon Transportation Commission and as a technical advisory member of the Oregon Innovation Council. So, Mark, I've told our listeners just a little tiny bit about you and your company. Could you take a brief moment to share a little bit more about that business and, of course, the passion that you have for automobiles? Sure thing. Yeah, well, and actually, um, I thank you again for having me on the show. I am not, a, I'm not originally a car guy. So a, a little bit of additional background is before I was in, uh, before I started Arkimoto, I was actually a, a video game developer, been de- developing computer games for most of my life. Uh, and it was only really the sale of uh, my first startup company in 2007 that provided the resources to uh, get started on a very different path, which is the push to bring true sustainable mobility solutions into the marketplace. That's what Arkimoto is all about. Well, I think this is cool. And that's why I wanted to have you on the the show here, because the fact that you started in a different industry, but now you become a, we'll call you a car guy today. Is that fair enough? Sure. Sure. Yeah. Well, <laughs> at least a mobility guy. A mobility guy. There you go. Absolutely. Well, with the changes that are occurring so rapidly in mobility, I found your story really, really fascinating. And the fact that you came from a different industry, but then used that, and kudos to you for selling a company in 2007. That was a tough year to sell a company. Well, well, it was it was uh, early 2007. Actually, it was it was the, the good time to sell a company. Right it started before. to get much worse. <laughs> nice yeah. timing. T- timing is important. It's absolutely important, especially during that time of the year. 
Well, we're going to learn a lot more about you and about your company as we continue on this journey. But first, I want to ask you for a success quote or a mantra. This is a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning here on cars. Yeah, even if they're electric and quiet. So, Mark, take the wheel. Well, I, you know, there are a, a few quotes that I've carried with me for some time, but but I think one that, that always motivates me is uh, something a yoga teacher of mine used to say frequently, which is that perfection is just a direction. To, to me, it is a, a, a constant invocation of continuous improvement, but also recognizing that, that where you're aiming is, is, is truly the most important thing. You know, this is an interesting concept because uh, a company that I ran for years, I was involved in a company back when it was started and was there for 20 years, car care company focused on selling very, very high end goods. Our, our mantra was an old saying by Sir Henry Rolls Royce of finding the best and then making it better and striving for perfection. But I've heard this concept of what you're sharing over and over that sometimes if you strive too hard for perfection, you never reach your goal, right? It's important to recognize the successes that brought you to where you are. There's, you know, to, to, to see the good in, uh, in where you're standing in the moment and to have a really clear assessment, a willingness to look very clearly and very honestly at where you are and where you need to go. So how have you incorporated this concept of this saying into the business you've created today? We consider one of our very most core values the principle of continuous improvement. And that's something that we have borrowed shamelessly from Toyota is the idea that we all are responsible for continuously improving ourselves, our work product, our ability to work together effectively. It's through that push of really clear and honest introspection that we find the winning pathways forward. Awesome. This next question I ask my guest is when you first realized you were a car guy. Now, you said you came from a background of the gaming industry. You weren't really a car guy, but let's Let's kind of mix this question up a little bit. Is there a pivotal moment when you knew you wanted to be in the mobility sector? No, I actually, well, I was a, a General Motors scholar uh, when I was in college. So GM actually paid for engineering degree and a big chunk of my higher ed. Wow. Uh, and awesome. it, it, so, so I was an intern at Delco Electronics in, uh, in Indiana my first uh, summer after freshman year. And then I did work for their satellite division. Uh, after my sophomore year. It was actually in that experience of working in sort of big industry that I told myself I, I would never go into the car business. I was really cut out to be a software guy. It was only when, uh, you know, sort of having worked through the computer games business for more than a decade, coming out of, of the sale of Garage Games, which was, was my first startup, that I really started to look at, well, how should I really be applying my energy to solve the, the big problems of the day? Transportation has always been a passion of mine, if not for the, the physical devices, then at least for the pursuit of a system that makes more sense. Ah, I see. Now, it's interesting to me, you're in the game industry, which is entertainment in a sense, and now you're in the mobility industry, and you've taken that mobility concept, and we're going to talk more about your business in a second here, but you've taken that concept of fun into mobility because these first vehicles you're producing are not really cars you would use to get to work back and forth or is there a way to go out and enjoy the country enjoy the countryside but in a fun and perhaps economically or uh, echo <laughs> manageable way with electricity uh, well I, I really look at the fun factor as kind of the, the spoonful of sugar that helps the clean tech medicine go down in a most delightful <laughs> way yes uh, we, i remember we, that the pursuit of the project has been all about driving efficiency to make the everyday trips that we take you know, if you, if you think about how people drive, there's a big disconnect between how we transport ourselves and the tools that we use for that job. We go alone almost all the time, sometimes with just one other person with a relatively small amount of stuff. It could be a gym bag. It could be a briefcase. It could be some groceries that we're going home with. But the cars that we use have, have, are so much more capable than what we actually use them for on a regular basis. And so the, the idea of, of the fun utility vehicle was really ultimately to make a very utility focused product. But as we made it more and more efficient, we realized that that also made it really fun to operate. It's, it's lightweight. It's very nimble to move around uh, the road. Uh, you've got even with a, a relatively small battery relative to the car, um, it has plenty of torque, a lot of get up and go. And so. We were initially selling the, the vehicle uh, or the idea of the vehicle on its efficiency virtues, 
But over and over, people who tried it out would say, this is just so much fun. And that's where the idea of the name of the fun utility vehicle came from. I see. Very cool. I think it's a neat idea. It looks like a ton of fun to me. Let's take a look at some of these roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge or a big failure you face. If you want to focus on with this company, that's fine. It doesn't really marry where you go, matter to me where you go. It's more about the learning lesson here, how you work through it, and how you use that experience to help you gain even more momentum as you move forward. Uh, well, I, every meaningful endeavor that I've embarked upon in life has been really almost always a story of continuous failure. Uh, and so, you know, Arkimoto, you, you talked about eight generations of development. Well, that meant that seven were swings and misses. I, I think probably the the biggest challenge, particularly for for entrepreneurs, but I would say this is for anyone trying to tackle a big problem, is that uh, when you start out, you have an idea of what the problem is and some sense of where a solution might lie. But it's it's really only when you actually try and put it into place that you can fully assess it and see where your see where your ideas were uh, were right and see where your ideas and and reality have a disagreement. I, I would say probably the hardest challenge in the whole thing is to get to the end of one of those cycles and then still be willing to look with as much clarity as you can at the end result and say, you know, is this really what I was shooting for? Is you know, or or, or is is the princess in another castle? I see. Let me ask you this. You talk about, say, seven swings and a miss and then a hit finally at the end. For folks out there that might tend to give up sooner on something in life, and it could be something not as extravagant or complicated as creating a vehicle like you have. It could be something really simple like sustaining an exercise program or a healthy diet or something. But you may say that's simple. I, that can be uh, as challenging as just about anything else. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm living it right now myself, Mark. Let me ask you this. What's what's something that you put into your skull, your mind, that helps you look at these failures, let's call them a failure or a challenge, and say, okay, that's fine. We learned this, and then we move forward. What helps you keep moving forward so you don't stop that momentum? It's a good question because, again, we, you know, was, even just in the, in the context of Arkimoto, it was seven years swinging and missing, but there was always... I think we would get to the, 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 what would happen is we would just get to the end of each iteration. I would look out at the market as a whole and say, well, has anybody else really cracked this problem that we're trying to solve? Or are we still in, in as good a position as any to really go after it? I think for Arkimoto, it has been the continuous forcing function, if you will, has been the really the the immediacy and urgency of solving the climate problem that even when we we hit a stumbling point the the mission that we were all set upon uh to you know, that we'd all set upon uh was still very present and very necessary to go after you know i had uh paul rivera he's the ceo of electromechanica they're producing a a car they're launching next year you've probably heard of it being in the industry called a solo and oh, your yeah. Story, yeah, yeah. yeah, your story reminds me a lot of his. Uh, their president is Henry Reiser, a friend of mine who builds uh, replica old Porsches from Intermechanica Company. Your, your story reminds me of theirs in the sense that they were looking at vehicles that people use these big, large vehicles to go relatively short or medium distances. And then they sit all day. The, the solo vehicles, a single seater car, commuter car designed specifically for one thing, go back and forth to work. Uh, so it takes up less space, less energy, uh, all that kind of thing. So uh, definitely uh, it re- just reminded me of that show for you listeners that didn't get to hear my story with him. Uh, go back and you'll find it on the Cars yeah! website. Now, this next question may not apply to you, but I'm going to ask you anyway, because now you are in the automotive industry in a sense, mobility industry. Do you have a, a vehicle in your life that was a first special vehicle? Maybe it's the one you're producing today. My parents' sky blue VW Rabbit always uh, had a special place in my heart since it was the vehicle I uh, learned how to how to drive on and how to drive a, a manual. The first car I actually owned uh, was a uh, special for a couple reasons. One is it, it was that that sort of uh, I, I still I think I, I still grew up at a time when when owning a car was sort of a 
particular rite of passage. I got my driver's license the, the day after my 16th birthday. So I definitely, if you look at kids growing up today, I think there's much less of a, of a focus on the car as a symbol of freedom um, since they've all got rideshare apps and, uh, and games to play on mobile devices. The, the need to sort of be a, a driver as a, as a controller of one's own destiny is fading. But that Subaru legacy that I got was my, my first car. And then also the vehicle I decided to let go of and go car free and become a bicycle commuter in the early 2000s. Wow. So you don't have a seller's remorse story when it comes to a car then, huh? Uh, no, 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 no. It was, it was actually a, a letting go of the car was for me a moment of freedom. Oh. Uh, and then a, a, a few years later, I, I got my first house and then realized that the more sedentary modes of travel are actually uh, do do indeed have a place in the world and in my life, um, and that was what set me on the on the quest to find an everyday electric vehicle. I didn't want a full size car. I didn't want to buy into the uh, one person driving six empty seats around uh, mode. That that is really what it's not that it's that it is the consumer's fault that that is the way things are. It's just that the product, the products that we are offered to solve the problem of mobility are, are built around that paradigm that's been going on for more than 100 years. Exactly. Well, let me have you share with our listeners a lot more about Archimoto and the fun utility vehicle. Tell us what we might expect in this vehicle. Uh, is it available now? And what is so exciting about the fun utility vehicle? And and that's the name of this first vehicle you produce. Is that right? Yes. The FUV. Yes. Uh, it, it's sort of the, the antidote for the, the idea of the SUV. And it's to bring daily utility on a much, much lighter, much smaller platform. So the vehicle, the FUV, is, a, is technically a motorcycle. It's a three-wheeled vehicle, two wheels in front, one wheel in back. Uh, it has dual motor front wheel drive. So one electric motor, uh, controls each of the two front wheels. Uh, and then the dif- differential function is really just done in software. It, the, the battery is between your feet. And so it has the vehicle is designed really what, what is the real product of Arkimoto is, is a new vehicle platform as much as a new vehicle product. So what we have developed over those eight generations is, is a fundamentally new three wheel vehicle architecture. We believe it is ballasted very well for the road. So we put the heavy stuff where you want the heavy stuff to be on a three-wheel vehicle, primarily the drivetrain and the battery. And that gives it a, a very nimble, very stable ride for a vehicle that clocks in at uh, a curb weight of 1,300 pounds. Yeah, very lightweight. Is this a vehicle that I can drive anywhere? You can, as a motorcycle, you can participate on all the roads. You probably aren't going to drive it in really hairy off-road type scenarios, but but in terms of just the typical tasks of getting around the community, it does those very well. Uh, and then the platform itself, we are envisioning multiple products that will go on that same platform that use uh, around 90% the same parts. Uh, the first one of those is a product that we call the Deliberator. It gets rid of the second seat and adds uh, a bunch more storage capacity. And we see that as a as a very good solution for last mile delivery, whether you're talking about food or meals or parcels. And then we have an, another iter- another variant we call the rapid responder that is all about bringing the benefits of the FUV to emergency response, law enforcement, campus security, and have a, to, to have a very lightweight, very very efficient, low cost vehicle for fleets that helps uh, first responders get to incident sites more quickly, really has the potential to actually save lives. It's really cool. I notice on your website, and I love the landing page on your website, it makes me smile because the overhead shot of the vehicles uh, creating a nice little S-curve and then people smiling and riding them. You just, you can't help but smile when you look at this vehicle. And I see that you're uh, now shipping pre-order customers on the West Coast. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so we just began actual retail series production. Uh, September 19th uh, was our official kickoff of launch. So we have begun producing vehicles on the assembly line, certified, tested, ready to be on the road, and uh, we're now delivering them 
That's the, the reason why I am here in Southern California is I'm making uh, some of our very first California deliveries to some of our early adopters, as well as talking to folks in the media and helping get the word out about uh, Arkhamoto. Very, very cool. Where are your vehicles made? We have uh, our manufacturing facility. Our, our global headquarters is in Eugene, Oregon, the lesser known uh, electric vehicle capital of the world. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we have a, a we built a so, so we went public in 2012, or excuse me, 2017. Uh, we went public on the NASDAQ in order to fund the build out of the factory and the completion of the product primarily. And both of those are now, now done. So we have a, an automated, we, we really go from raw materials, sheet metal, tube steel to, to finished parts. And then we assemble those parts together on the assembly line. Well, congratulations of how far you've come and what you've produced. It's absolutely fantastic. I'll remind our listeners there'll be links on Mark's show notes page, or you can just go to ARCIMOTO.com and check out this new, very fun, very fun vehicle. Mark, up next is the last lap before we put the pedal to the metal. Let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. When you want proven performance, there's one brand that's been around since 1938. That's Edelbrock, building the finest American-made performance products for the street and track. Edelbrock's products are designed and dyno-proven to deliver maximum results. Edelbrock has thousands of made-in-the-USA performance products for all makes and models. From their new AVS2 carburetor and innovative ProFlow 4 EFI for your muscle car or truck. To superchargers for your daily driver and more, visit edelbrock.com to check out the latest products for your ride and when you're ready to check out enter cars yeah in the coupon code and get 10 percent off your order that's edelbrock automotive performance since 1938 you take care of your cars but who takes care of your investments tune-ups aren't just for engines updating your financial plan is important too your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimble.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp. Member FINRA SIPC. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Are you looking for a way to get your products or services into the ears of thousands of automotive enthusiasts around the globe? I can help. This is Mark Green here at Cars Yeah, and I'd be honored to be an influencer and ambassador for your brand in a unique and personal way. Five days a week, thousands of subscribers and listeners enjoy the Cars Yeah podcast and website. Contact me today and I'll show you how at mark at carsyeah.com or connect with me through the Cars Yeah website at carsyeah.com. All right, Mark, we are back, and I have a bit of an introspective question for you. I want to get into your head a little bit here. If you woke up tomorrow and you were a vehicle, you were actually manifested a vehicle, not what you want to be, but how you perceive yourself as a vehicle of mobility, what would Mark be and why? Uh, I would probably be a, a light conversion electric truck. Okay. And now you mentioned truck on the end of that. Why'd you add that? Well, you know, a city workhorse, been around the block once or twice, but not too worn out, and uh, you know, you know, still has a uh, still has good bones. There you go, love it. All right, Mark, we're up to the last lap here. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some quick blips of that electric throttle. Hang on, though, because I know there's a lot of torque involved here. So here we go. What's the best uh, automotive, or I'll substitute automotive for mobility advice you've ever received? The best mobility advice I've ever received was actually uh, talking to the, the founder of Nike about running a half marathon. And he said that the trick to the half marathon is to start out slow and then slow down. I think that is good advice in running, but it's also good advice in terms of uh, building a, a venture and really thinking through the problems that you're trying to solve before you go sprinting out the gate. Uh, Because sometimes it's going a little bit slower that helps you finish fast. Yeah, great advice. 
Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? I think having a probably the the practices that I keep coming back to, whether it's taking um, time in the day to sit silently or stretch the body with yoga, those are the practices, the, the sort of wellness based practices that I, I think are really important to get through the most challenging circumstances uh, that life and business can throw your way. Well said. Now, how about a resource? There are so many these days. Is there one in particular you'd like to share? What's a good resource to draw on? Uh, the, the movie The Princess Bride seems to have uh, good life advice in just about every single line of, of, of the movie. Very interesting answer to that question. I've never had that kind of an answer. I think that's really great. You know, it's, it's, it's like when they're about to go in the fire swamp and she says, we'll never su- survive. And he says, nonsense. You're only saying that because no one ever has. Wow. Those are the sorts of, uh, <laughs> of, of, of life truisms that you can find in that particular work. Oh, very nice. You're making me smile because it reminds me of uh, my daughter taking her to that movie and uh, the joy on both of our faces with that movie. It kind of surprised me as well. I do remember a lot of those. So great answer. How about if I could arrange for you to sit down and have a drink or a meal with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased? Who would that individual be? That's a that's a big question. Uh, in the, in the automotive industry, love to sit down and have a a chat with Elon about batteries. Ah, uh, yes. If you can yeah. if you can hook that up. Yeah, I'm trying to get him on this show too. He's a tough guy to reach, but uh, I would love to talk with him. Uh, just uh, what's going on inside that brain? I don't know if I could keep up. But uh, that would most definitely, I'll see what I can do for you, Mark, okay? Thanks. Much All appreciated. Right. You're welcome. How about a book? Is there a book you've read you think our listeners would enjoy or benefit from? Have you ever read The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Oh, yeah. That's an old, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. My two favorite books are The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and The Tao Te Ching. Okay, um, yeah. Both very different, um, but, but have practical bits uh, in them that, that really do help in everyday life. Uh, absolutely. Great two reference books there. I remind our listeners, you can find links to those books on Mark's show notes page. Just go to carsyad.com, type in Mark, and I'll spell his last name, F-R-O-H-N-M-A-Y-E-R. All right, Mark, we are up to the checkered flag. This question could be a bit of a doozy. I'm very curious to see how you answer this, though. I'm going to buy you any cool collector car, toy car, play car, something very unique. A uh, collector has uh, vintage applied to it here, something old. But there are a few rules to this game so that I can park this car in your garage that you have to abide by. One is you can't sell it to fund your business. So if you pick a Ferrari GTO and you get about 70 mil from that, you got to keep the car. I you was actually to... thinking of a Ferrari. So yeah, just, of course. You have to uh, drive old, it. Old, old school, <laughs> yeah. old school classic. Ferrari. Yeah, you have to drive it. No garage queens allowed around here. And it's the only cool collector car you can park in your garage. So choose wisely, my friend. Do you, do you really need more than one? You know, some guys, I had a, ju- a guest on the show that has 580 collector cars. So some people do need more than one. Uh, my garage is not that big, though. His, is, his garage is over three acres large. Three acres of enclosed garage for this collection. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah. More of a museum, I think. Truly impressive. Uh, it's incredible. Uh, yeah. Set up. Uh, at some point, you got to make up your mind, though. Right? <laughs> yeah. Which which one do you really love? So exactly. Uh, so so for you, what's it going to be? I, I think an old Ferrari GT. It, as long as I actually fit in it, I think that would be my only challenge. Okay. Are you very tall? I'm six four. Oh, that's going to so, be a problem. Yeah, the Ferraris are not made for tall people. <laughs> that's for sure. Really, I'm not tall, so I can fit in anyone, but. Interesting. Well, but but if I if I had an old classic car, I probably wouldn't drive it a ton. You might think of it as blasphemous, but I would I would likely convert it to an electric vehicle. Oh, oh gosh. Okay, all you listeners out there just had a heart attack. Calm down. Calm down. Uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe what I can do is I have had guests on this show that build replica vintage Ferraris, so you don't uh, sacrifice an actual old Ferrari. Um, right. GTO comes to mind. So they could build you probably a custom car. They could stretch that frame a little bit so your legs could fit in there. I think we'll do something like that for you. How's that sound? Perfect. Okay. Perfect. And you could load like it a, with it like a good, a good, good, good project once, uh, <laughs> once we're, once we're a little further down the road. 
Yeah, well, it sounds expensive to me, but don't worry, I'm going to be paying for it, so don't worry about it. We'll uh, we'll take good care of you. Mark, you've taken us on a very fun and quiet ride today being electric vehicles. I've really enjoyed learning more about Arkimoto. I want to thank you for sharing your journey. Could you offer us one little parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the beautiful countryside there outside of Eugene in that electric custom-built Ferrari GT? Right. Not a very productive call. Um, <laughs> yes. So I would say, and thinking about this from the, the building of a, a venture, is that when you talk to folks, they'll often offer you problems in the form of a solution. That is, you should do X, where X is illustrating something that is, there's a, there's a problem underneath that X is a solution to. Particularly when you're, when you're trying to solve a, a, a big problem, you might be willing to dismiss some of those solutions because they don't match with some of your other preconceptions or directions that you want to go. But if you make a habit of listening for the problem in solutions that are offered, you can actually get, uh, you can integrate more of a solution for a broader audience. If you find that problem and say, well, how can I, how can I solve that problem and still keep true to the framework that I'm going after? Spectacular. I love it. And what's the best way for our listeners to learn more about you and your company? Uh, so Arkimoto, you, you said the website before, but it's, uh, repetition never hurts. It's ARCIMOTO.com. You can check out the videos of the fun utility vehicle and the delivery product that we're coming out with targeting production for that next year. Um, and, uh, yeah, feel free to, to follow along and join in the story. Tell me where the name of your company came from. I was going to ask you that earlier, and then we got onto some fun topics. Where did you come up with the name? I was looking for something that evoked the future of mobility, and uh, vehicle companies are hard enough that I figured starting with the letter A, uh, you know, it'd sort of take every sorting <laughs> advantage that you can get. Yeah. Uh, so ARC represents the, the archetype or the, the arc of the future. I and then Moto is drive. So the brand name means future I drive. It's a I brand it. identity for the next generation of drivers. I love it. Great. Thank you for sharing that. Again, listeners, you can find everything Mark has shared and his website links on the Cars yeah website. Just type Mark into that search bar. His page will pop right up and you'll learn all about this really fun new vehicle. Go check out the website. I think it's going to make you smile just like it makes me smile every time I go to it. Hey, Mark, thanks for being so generous. Congratulations and best wishes on this launch happening down there in California. Fantastic time for you and your team. You guys must be very, very proud. Thanks for sharing your experience with the Cars Yow listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Mark, thanks for having me. There you go. Hey, Mark Green here from Cars Yeah. Did you know you can now see me? on the Cars Yeah! TV show. It's a weekly visit to some of my past Cars Yeah! podcast guests, and I take you along for the ride. You go behind the garage door and into their lives, their businesses, and you get to see what makes them successful. With tens of millions of viewers, Cars Yeah! TV is making its mark. Cars Yeah! TV is available on MAV TV and Lucas Oil Racing TV. You'll find MAV TV on Direct TV, Fubo TV, Fios by Verizon, or you can stream it through Lucas Oil Racing Television online. And they said I only had a face for podcasting. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!